Welcome to your live webinar Change Management Tips for Digital Transformation. Thank you for joining us today. Our presenter today is Luis Caceres, Change Management Trainer. Hello, Luis. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. It's a great pleasure for me to share insights with such qualified professionals who invest time and attention uh, to improve their skills. Very well. The content that I presented today is not improvised. Actually, is uh, developed from uh, articles and webinars uh, which have been presented in the PMI community, project management community around the world, and has been very well received. Over 100,000 professionals have attended, and very well rated too, rated four over five in average. So that means that uh, this content makes sense for many of you. And also that you have been very patient with my, my English. And thank you for that. Let's get started. Please answer the questions in the pools. Uh, we are going to, to perform along this webinar. And at the end, we are going to discuss uh, you, the questions you might have synchronously, synchronously or asynchronously. You, you can leave the questions if you are not attending live. No problem, you can register your question. You are, we are going to answer as soon as possible. Okay, this is our agenda for today. We are going to start understanding why do digital transformation fail? And we are going to explore uh, the causes and at the end, some tips to avoid these common causes of failure, right? Okay. According to the stats and research, we have a failure rate of 70%. And this 70% failure rate in digital transformation is not from today. It has been continuously uh, persistent, this rate, since the 70s. We haven't improved the, this success rate, the failure rate. We haven't improved our success rate. And in this situation, uh, we have that for each 1 trillion invested in, in digital transformation, we lost 900 billions every year in the world. This is an estimation by Harvard Business Review. And in this context, we have a lot of situations and cases of digital transformation failure from starting a digital service separated from the rest of the company or uh, not considering forgot to considering competition or creating a digital business focused in size instead of quality and many cases similar to this. So. Let me hear from you. What do you think? What is the cause of the digital transformation failure? Please write your answers in the pool, in the chat, uh, in the chat even um, from YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Okay. Do you think? Transformation, digital transformation files because they fail to implement some exotic technology, or because maybe because they don't did, do not change the ways of working, or by ignoring the culture, or all of the above. Please write in the chat. Okay. In order to visualize the complexity of the digital transformation, I would like to, induce, uh, to use a metaphor to illustrate. Do you know someone 
who lost weight just by wearing sportwear, just by wearing new clothes. We all know it's not so simple. It's a little bit more complicated than that, right? In order to lose weight, it's not enough to wear new clothes or get new tools. You also need to develop new behaviors, like wake early to grow every day or at some frequency. But in order to develop this new behavior, you also need to change your mindset. Because if you are the, the, the kind of pe person that uh, hates to wake early, well, that thinking is not going to help you with your goal. So you need to change, refrain all concepts and adopt new concepts. And in this case, you can adopt something like the bed are for the six. So I'm going jumping out of the bed because staying in the bed is only for the sick people. But not also that, you need also to develop new attitudes, new feelings towards the action, like sports make it more healthy, strong, smart, sexy, and so on. In order to develop new actions, you need to be convinced with some reasons, but also with some emotion. On the, uh, otherwise, you are not going to reach, reach your res results. What is the relation of this with digital transformation? When we speak about transformation, transformation means changing our behaviors, changing our mindset, and developing new attitudes. That's what transformation means. Unhappily, many companies believe they could undergo a transformation just by wearing new, new, new tools or new clothes. Wearing the clothes of the digital transformation. Let's imagine an hypothetical organization you might, uh, some names may come to your mind. It's very similar. So imagine an organization who has, which has millions of users, the customers. And the customer, when needs uh, some attention, some customer service, they need to wait in lines. They, they need to go to the physical store or office and wait in line for hours. That is very frustrating for the customer. And I'm sure we all have been through these situations like this. This or kind of organization starts a digital transformation initiative. And they implement new exotic technologies. But in many cases, what happens is they use new technologies to deliver the same customer frustration. The customer don't, doesn't need to, to go to the store, to the office, to the customer service desk to get frustrated. The customer now can, uh, can be can get frustrated in, from the comfort of his home using a mobile application. But the bad experience is the same. Have you experienced that? When this happened, we used to say we are paving the chaos path. Paving the chaos path is a metaphor used in the IT world when we implement exotic technologies, but using old processes. When you use new technologies to do the, the same old thing, you are not changing, you are not changing the ways of working or, or the, the value delivery doesn't change because we, you are using new technologies to do the same. So you, you use new technologies to deliver the same frustration to the customers. Let's understand how to avoid paving the way, paving the cost paid path when implementing or undergoing digital or promoting and digital transformation in your organization. 
And let's start from the start to, to agree the concept of digital transformation. Let's agree that digital transformation is the adoption of digital, te digital technologies to fundamentally change the ways of working in order to improve value delivery. And please pay attention to three important concepts, elements. Adopting digital technologies, changing the ways of working, and improving value delivery. Let's start with the adoption of technology. A common mistake regarding adoption of technology is to believe that you can get adoption of technology just by training and communications. How many of you have lost weight just by intensive, intensive uh, receiving communications? Just communication doesn't transform the behavior of no one. It's more complex than that. So many company organizations, when uh, evaluating the adoption of the, of the technology, they perform a survey and ask questions like, do you know how to, to use this system, this new technology? And the people say, yes. Yes, we have intensive training. We got the certification and so on. Spend hours in training. OK. But when they ask to the people, would you recommend this solution, this technology to your friends? They say no. People could be using a technology one solution because they are forced to. Because they have don't, don't uh, no have an other option, or because there are some penalties by not using that. You only get adoption when the people love your solution, your technology. Adoption refers to the intention of using your technology. And this intention of using your technology, your solution, is a complex equation that is related with factors like uh, benefit perception, risks, practicity, and others. So it's not only with training and communication you are going to reach adoption of technology. And this is not something that I made up for, for, for this webinar. This is a actually requirement in some governments. So you are going to provide some technologies on some governments. You are um, asked to deliver not only the solution, but also to ensure that your customers, your users, will love your uh, technology. And I have been made this uh, for some governments. OK, it's not something out of the reality. OK, by talking to governments, let's understand Moving from the adoption of technology to the next factor, exploring a case in government. It was the case in a digital transformation in a public entity. And imagine the situations. Citizens need to wait uh, for attention for hours. And when they arrive, arrive to the clerk, to the office, they got their requirements uh, refused because they are missing some documents, stamps, something like that. And the public employee, even when he wants to help, he cannot because his hands are tied because of the processes. The process doesn't allow the employee to help the citizen. So in some public entities, we promote you we support the digital transformation initiative we perform an assessment and ask to the public employees why they think is required to have an successful digital transformation and the first thing they from the many factors they they uh, they say is 
The first thing doesn't matter which technology you, you, we are going to implement. You need to change to focus on people instead of processes. That means you need to give, give, give some autonomy for the employees because the employees understand the situation of the citizen in front of him or her and has the resources and the knowledge about the processes and hope to help the, the citizen. But the process needs to be flexible enough and the employee needs to be uh, have enough autonomy to decide what is better for this situation, for each situation. And also means that you need to implement collaboration instead of classical bureaucracy uh, and verticality in the public entities. So from this assessment, we, we, we can see that doesn't is not the successful the success of the digital transformation is not entirely related with the technology we are using but the ways of working when they say when the people say we need to change or focus uh, to people instead of processes we are referring to ways of working and when we are talking about ways of working, we're talking about culture. Because of the culture which defines the ways of working in our organization, defines the, the way the things are done around here. Here we have Lou Gessner, who has the CEO responsible for the transformation of the IBM in the 80s. In the 80s, IBM was a was believed to be an extinction because of the change of the technology in the market. But Lou Gessner was the responsible to transform the IBM in the successful service company that is today. And he says, culture is in just, is in just one aspect of the game. Culture is the game. It's very important. To help you to visualize, visualize the importance of the culture, please remember our friends at the beginning of this webinar. The same way we need to change our mindset, an organization needs to change his mindset in, in a digital transformation or any transformation. The mindset of the organization is the culture. Mindset is for the individual, culture is for the, is the mindset of the organization. Right. So in the same way, you need, we are going to uh, transform, we need to adopt new behaviors in the organization, like focusing on people instead of processes. New mindset uh, or goal, for example, clarity about uh, our goal is to ensure the customer satisfaction, satisfaction and also adopt new attitudes like being proud the, by having the customer happiest or making the people happy, helping the people makes me happy. We need, in the same way we are going to transform individuals, an organization also needs to change, to develop new behaviors, new mindset and new attitudes. Does this make sense to you? Hope so. Please write the com your comments on the chat. So far, how to avoid paving the cost paths? We have we have seen so far that we need to ensure uh, technology adoption and technology adoption is not the people using technology but wanting to use, recommending, and uh, visualizing the, the the technology as a tool. And also, we need to change or promote new behaviors, new mindset, and new attitudes. Pretty simple, right? How? How do you, how uh, we could change the organization during a process of digital transformation? It's not so simple. You know, all habits die hard, 
and habits. If habits, uh, habits are died, uh, are hard to change. Imagine an, an entire organization. So let me give you some tips. Take it from or uh, the content of your course, change management and certification course. The first tip is listen. Before doing anything, saying anything, first listen. And listen actively. And if you, if you want to deliver, to avoid the, the, the customer frustration and deliver something that the customer will love, you need to listen there first. And not just uh, listen to your customer, but also your employees, your providers, stakeholders, and any members of your ecosystems. And uh, that helps not only to map requirements, but also to engage the people in the transformation you are going to promote. And there are techniques to do that. Uh, not only uh, techniques for uh, individual, listen to individuals and people, but also in a corporate level. So forget the uh, suggestion box and try to uh, new tools using for example, design thinking to promote uh, open innovation or co-creation of, of your solutions. Let me give you an example to visualize the importance of the listening. A very simple case. Was, do you know that there was a government program to deliver houses to indigenous community? It was in a South American country but the indigenous natives refused the houses because they were squatted once. You might say, we may say, what's the problem with this squatted houses? All our houses are squared. But for the indigenous people, you for cultural reasons, they use round houses. So they refuse it. The houses, the, the government delivered it. But nobody, nobody asking them what they wanted. They just deliver in houses, not uh, never listen to the to the customer what they want. Time, money, and resources were lost in this initiative. So this is just to mention the importance of listening. And when uh, you uh, experience the companies who perform digital transformation and they only deliver the same frustration using new technologies, most of the cases because they don't listen to the customer, right? Does it make sense to you? Hope so. Our next tip is lead with purpose. And what, is, what it has to be, what is the relation of this, the purpose with the Brazilian carnivals? Well, in the Brazilian carnivals, we have we have these uh, samba schools, and each samba school has three thousand members, all volunteers, and they they deliver this amazing show with coordination and project delivery. This is a project very well executed with quality, and they deliver this fantastic experience. Motivated not by money, because they are volunteers, but by purpose, because this is meaningful for them. And they deliver very results that many companies with very well and very highly skilled and very well paid professionals, right? So it's very important in your transformation initiative, you need to link your vision of change of the transformation with and purpose. Otherwise, you are not going to conquer the hearts of the people. You can offer a lot of reasons, but you are not offering an emotion, not awakening an emotion and desire to change. That's why it's very important to lead with purpose. Does it make sense to you? Very well. Our next tip is very important, is leading by example especially from the sponsors, from the, the top leadership, because the leaders are role models. 
they show the expected behaviors and attitudes. And they can make the difference. They can shape the culture to be either competitive or collaborative, depending on the, on the leader. So it's useless to promote a um, transformation which requires collaboration if the leaders are not an example of collaboration or open communication. So that's why it's very important to, to have the leaders and the sponsors on board promoting the behaviors and uh, working the talk and uh, being role models of the expected behavior. All four tips came from a uh, common mistake. Change agents network is a concept we use in change management to implement uh, to implement the change a network of promoters of the transformation we call technically change agents network. But a common mistake is appointing to the people. Usually they got an a, an, an list from the human resources department. I'm pointing people to the to the initiative. That doesn't work. That's not the base uh, approach. What we need is to find volunteers because they already have the intrinsic motivation to support and promote your transformation. Ah, but you are concerned because mm, I don't believe we have so many supporters. Actually, I believe we have more resistance than support. In that case, you can relax. Because according with research, we, all, we all with there, there will always be at least 16% of people supporting your change initiative, your transformation initiative. And we explain how, why, in our uh, change manager certification course with all the research and theory supporting that. But you, you can uh, relax and uh, be sure that at least 16% of the population, or your target population, will support your change initiative. Is that the people you need to find? So the first thing is call for volunteers, and they will go into show up, right? Does it make sense to you? Our next step is plan for quick wins. Just like in, in agile methodologies, you need to deliver early results to prove that the change works. And it helps to get more people on board by proving that the change uh, works. And actually is uh, to help the people to visualize and feel the benefits of the change. So it's very important to implement a plan uh, for quick wins. Remember our friend Lau Gessner? Well, our next tip is do not forget to consider the culture. Our friend Lau Gessner, who was responsible for the transformation of the IBM, he wrote a book titled who said elephants can dance? Because he made he made dance the elephant, which was the elephant was IBM, a heavy and a slow corporation, vertical decision making and so on, bureaucratic. So it's very slow, very heavy, like an elephant. What happened is many traditional companies undergoing transformation initiatives, digital transformation, agile transformation, business agility transformation, so on. They try to transform without considering the culture. And they try to become more agile, like a tiger in this example. Let me represent the more agile company in with a tiger. A more agile, uh, an innovative company, like in many startups, they have different ways of working, different culture. In the traditional companies, we have silos and vertical decision uh, processes. And in 
in more agile companies, we have collaboration and empowerment. If the co traditional company tries to tra transform without considering the culture, tries to become an tiger without considering the culture, what happens is this elephant become, become an elephant disguised as a tiger. Only wearing the clothes of the agility, but in the in the end is the same old vertical decision process and silos and so on. Okay. Now where do all these tips came from? What is the scientific research supporting these tips? I would like to offer a lot many many other tips. But for the effects of this webinar, we like to restrict to seven. The seven is use an structural approach based on scientific research. The complexity, the human side of the transformation is so high, you cannot improvise, you cannot improvise tools or approach. I recommend, highly recommend to have a strong theoretical background to understand what are you are doing? What is the uh, motivation be behind any tool you are uh, you are going to use? That's why I work with the APMG certification, which is the most complete certification. It's called the PMP of the chain management, and I'm very proud of working with that because it is really the most complete. So my recommendation is use a structured approach based in scientific research okay why change management is important for you uh, as a professional because change is the law in our time in the last uh, 20 years technology has changed so fast that many products become obsolete and products and service becomes obsolete very quickly. That's why you cannot spend anymore three years to develop a product because in three years your product idea could become obsolete when you deliver. But it's not only the technology that is changing quickly and for the people to, to change their process and um, value proposition. The behavior of the consumer is also changing. If in the past people love to you to eat industrialized food, now the people is looking for organic food. In the past, we use a lot of fuel, fuel, fossil fuel. Now we are moving towards more eco-friendly solutions. But only that. We have pandemics and commercial wars disrupting the global supply chain and that is forcing many uh, companies to find new providers, uh, changing the, their value proposition, designing new service, adapt their products and so on. That's why in a buca world it becomes more important to the professionals to improve their change management skills. So let me uh, invite you to enroll in our next course. It's um, starting in November 12. We are very pleased because in our courses we have not only Skylet experienced professional, but also uh, university professors with PhD. And that makes a great uh, networking experience. We also have a young professional that is very richful in networking. And you also could have a discount using the discount uh, the, the coupon CM4DT. Ah, but also by visiting the the page course, you could have uh, you can assess your knowledge. There is some some nice um, quizzes. You can assess your knowledge for free and realize, visualize how much the course could help you to improve your career, okay? Very well, 
I would like the last thing uh, I would like to hear from you how much your understanding has, understanding has changed. Please write in the chat. I'm going to uh, answer as soon as possible. Okay, please leave your questions. We are going to answer. Um, hope to see you in, in our next course. Thank you very much. See you on the next course.